that's our agenda for today. Thank you, got that recording notification. Here's our agenda for today. We'll talk a little bit about Green Our Planet. We'll talk about our new Garden Connect program, uh, our curriculum and virtual academy we will touch on, uh, teaching in the garden and outside. We'll have a little discussion on that. And then we'll talk about some teacher training opportunities as well. And I've got some other stuff sprinkled in there for you too. So we'll start out, and if you uh, were part of Chris Anderson's presentation, you may already know a little bit about Green Our Planet, but I will go ahead and share with you. Um, I'll tell you what our organization is all about. And if you ever want to check out our website, it's really easy to find, greenourplanet.org. All right, so the first thing that I really want to show you is uh, the biggest thing that Green Our Planet does. And I know it feels like I'm jumping around, jumping into just one of our programs, but I like to start with this video because it really encompasses the feel of Green Our Planet and what we do in Las Vegas and what we hope to spread across the nation. So I'm gonna really quickly unshare my screen so that I can optimize for sound and video. And then in just a moment, I'm gonna play that video for you. So hang on, I'm gonna reshare. And it's gonna, it might look a little bit different, but you'll be able to um, hear the, let see, share sound. Okay, and here we go. it should be okay now. All right, do you all still see that video there? And let me know if you hear sound. You hear sound? Okay. Seems like we're good. I'm gonna make, make it full screen for you. And let's get rid of this silly little, oh, I guess I still can see all the pictures. Usually I can't see all the pictures when I'm optimizing for sound. So I'm glad that I can now, that's good. Absolutely amazing. These kids are doing a great job and super excited to be able to come out and support them. Being in the food world, seeing kids interested in growing their own produce and, and enjoying what they eat really kind of is uplifting and inspiring to me as a chef. Thank you. 
We're learning about uh, selling and how to give, like, how to do money, basically. Or basic, basically marketing. Like some fresh radishes. And advertising. Like fresh fresh radishes. radishes. Do you have one? Do you guys have grown? Yeah. 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 They're, fresh, they're freshly grown. Guaranteed. To think that all of our precious plants from our school are making other people's dinners and making them happier and like bringing them food, it's amazing. enjoying the product that you create. get out of this full screen video here and just a moment bear with me let's see i'm trying to hit the escape button let's see hang on one moment i'm gonna have to stop share for just a second there we go until we get back and then i'm coming right back so i love sharing that video because i think it really encompasses the whole feel of having a garden at your school and what you could do with it and how the students end up loving and taking ownership of the garden that you have at your school. So I, I don't like to leave that video for the last thing in the presentation. I like to leave it in the beginning because really it just gives you kind of a taste of what we're all about. So sorry about that. Now let's talk a little bit about Green Our Planet and what we do. So we are a nonprofit and we're based in Las Vegas, but we are a national nonprofit now. Our mission is to number one, increase student academic performance in STEM. Number two, connect students to nature. Number three, increase students' nutrition, education, and physical activity. And number four, empower students to create farmers markets to provide fresh food to school communities. And of course, we could never ever complete our mission without teachers, and that's you. We value our teachers who work with Green Our Planet, and we do our best to provide them with resources that, that they need to teach them in their classrooms and to keep their gardens healthy. So we always like to say thank you so much, teachers, because we know how hard you work, and we know how much time and effort you put in to these types of things. Whether you have a school garden yet or not, we really appreciate you. It is you who makes us who makes it happen. So Green Our Planet, uh, like I said, it uh, is based in Las Vegas and it started in Las Vegas, but is now a nationwide program. Um, with Green Our Planet's Garden Connect program, which we'll talk about, we are reaching schools all over the United States now, which is really awesome. And these little green um, markers here, they represent all of the gardens that we've worked with before, all of the schools that have gardens that we've worked with. And um, 
just this school year is when we started reaching nationally and providing program to schools um, not in Las Vegas or around Las Vegas. So it's pretty exciting. We've really, um, we've grown a lot and we've developed lots of different resources for our teachers. Um, these these uh, little markers do not include our hydroponics schools. So we have lots, lots more if you include hydroponics, but since this presentation is about gardening, I just wanted to include the school garden markers there. All right, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about our new program that Green Our Planet has that's called Garden Connect. And like I said, Garden Connect is our nationwide program that we provide to schools, not only in Las Vegas still, but other places as well. So with the Garden Connect program, um, we work with garden teams of teachers primarily. So schools form a garden team of teachers and usually that garden team of teachers has one teacher per grade level or however it works best with the school. Um, and then garden teams meet monthly with their garden connect coordinators and, um, and garden teams across the nation to decide on and implement goals, collaborate, learn about opportunities for their gardens and a lot more. And those are called garden connect seminars. Then, oops, sorry. Your garden, so your Garden Connect coordinator, who I mentioned before, helps facilitate the garden program at your school. So coordinators empower teachers by sharing the best school garden practices based on nearly a decade of working with schools. They assist with logistical planning and setup of student-run farmers markets if your school's interested in doing that sort of thing. Um, they keep teachers up to date on trainings, grants, and online events while connecting teachers to the rest of Green Our Planet's resources. They also connect you to teachers across the nation who also have a passion for STEM education through their school gardens. And the way that these teachers are all connected nationally is through the Green Our Planet Garden Portal, which is a um, networking website that was just launched in September 2022, so this past September, where um, teachers who are part of the Garden Connect program and the hydroponics program and soon to be our original outdoor garden program, um, they connect on this platform, they get their resources, they um, connect with other teachers, they post pictures, they collaborate with each other. It's just a really cool way to um, connect with other teachers that have gardens and to see to see what they're doing in their garden. Uh, for example, we have a we have a teacher um, who teaches at a school in Staten Island, and he connects with um, teachers that are part of our Garden Connect program in Las Vegas, and it's really cool because even though they have completely different climates, I mean completely different. It's they still share ideas with each other and look at each other's pictures and find it really interesting um, to see what each other is doing. So the a bit the biggest part I would say of our Garden Connect program is this Green Our Planet Garden Portal. Now uh, with all of our programs, hydroponics and Garden Connect um, as well, we uh, provide lots of different resources. And I would say the biggest bulkiest resource that we provide uh, is our curriculum resources. So we have um, four curriculum resources. We have a textbook, uh, which comes in the form of a PDF. Uh, we have our virtual academy, which I will um, I'll, I will talk more about in just a little bit. And we also have Canvas courses, which is sort of a blend between our um, textbook virtual and virtual academy. So that um, the Canvas courses that was kind of uh, born out of um, COVID and remote teaching. So uh, that's where that is where that came about. So any teacher who has access, who has our program has access to all of these things and can use them in their classroom with their school gardens. So the Virtual Academy is um, really, honestly, my absolute favorite part about our curriculum and what we offer. And um, as a part of its programming, um, we actually offer free access to, right, right now there is free access to our Virtual Academy, but that will not be forever. 
So the Virtual Academy is a collection of fun STEM, nutrition, and conservation lessons that are um, to the next generation science standards and are directly linked to garden based, our garden based curriculum lessons. And there are lots more that are, that are not necessarily linked to our lessons. By utilizing these lessons, students of all ages can learn from Green Our Planet's experts about STEM, nutrition, gardening, hydroponics, and a lot more. Um, they can learn how to grow fresh veggies at home with our farmers, discover the science of growing plants in water with our hydroponics experts, or cook up a healthy storm with our chefs who produce a lot of videos in our virtual academy as well. So we continue to create new content that comes out, I would say just about every two weeks, if not even faster. And um, I'm going to put in the chat, just so you have it, a link to the virtual academy. And then I'm actually going to show you how to get there because whether or not you have a garden at your school, which, which some of you probably don't, maybe some of you do, but you can use the virtual academy no matter what. And I'm gonna show you um, how to get to it. So I'm gonna click this link here, but I'm going to tell you how I get to this actual page. So on the Green Our Planet website that I mentioned earlier, greenourplanet.org, if you go into, and I'll click this logo to get back to the main page. If you go into our website and you go to our programs and then you go down to virtual academy, that's all you need to do and you're there. So I'll give you a little tour of this and hopefully my scrolling doesn't give anybody headaches. I know sometimes that gives me a headache, but you can see if you scroll down here are some featured lessons, and here is um, here are some buttons of some categories that you might be interested in. Um, for example, let's go on to let's go into nutrition lessons. So if you click nutrition lessons, you can find tons and tons of um, cooking demonstrations that are really good for teachers to use if you want to cook with your class, whether it's the food that you're harvesting from your gardens or it's just food that you cook with your class that, that you just buy. If you don't have a garden, that's fine too. Uh, tons and tons of these videos. And in these videos, not only are they demonstrating how to cook or prepare things, but they also give tips about nutrition and focus on um, kid-friendly language revolving around nutrition and cooking as well. So tons and tons of those. If you're into cooking with your students or want to be into that, that's a really, really good place to start. Tons and tons, I'm telling you, there are lots of them. Um, and and they, uh, we even have some in Spanish as well, which is really exciting because um, that way students actually can access um, these the virtual academy from home. And if their family speaks Spanish, these uh, these lessons in Spanish are a really good resource for them. So I love making sure I point out that those are there. Uh, let's see, so that was nutrition lessons. And by the way, there are more categories within nutrition lessons down there, down here. Um, now I'm gonna go back. I always just like to go back to our programs and virtual academy and then scroll down to that list of buttons there. That's what I usually do. Um, there are, well, I'll show you right now STEM, um, STEM garden lessons because like I said, these virtual academy videos are integrated in with our PDF curriculum that we offer. So you can, for example, if you're a kindergarten teacher, you can click on kindergarten lessons. And then um, there is a video lesson that guides you through the curriculum for almost every lesson in our curriculum. Um, even if you don't have the Greener Plant program, right now, while the Virtual Academy is free, you have access to these and you can use them in your classroom. It's, um, and if we have time at the end of the presentation, I will show you, um, I'll show you one of these, but um, We'll keep going and see if we have time for that. If not, I highly recommend um, checking these out because they are phenomenal. Um, our on-staff farmers actually star in the videos and they're really, really fun. The kids love them. We've we've received really great reviews on these videos. Um, let's see, one more category that I'll show you. I'm gonna go our programs, virtual academy. Scroll down to the buttons and let's see. Garden tutorials. This is a really good one. Um, 
our so our original um, school garden program in Las Vegas included a farmer that comes weekly to uh, the school gardens to help maintain and teach lessons in them. But our Garden Connect program doesn't include the farmer. It's kind of a, a smaller version of our original program. So I really like to point out these um, videos about how to care for your garden because we get a lot of questions from teachers in our Garden Connect program that say, hey, I have these, I have aphids, I have pests, how do I manage them in my garden? There's a really good video that we've produced on that that helps and um, all sorts of things, um, lots about composting, tools in the garden, transplanting, watering your garden, um, planting fruit trees, planting pollinator gardens, lots of fun stuff. And of course, fun facts from our farmers, um, highly recommend composting with worms. That's a really cool one. How to make your own toilet paper planters is really cool, fun activity to do, lots of, lots of cool stuff. And uh, like I said, um, it is really, um, there are so many videos. And like I said, I will show you at the end if we have time, but for now, I'm gonna go on back here. And by the way, you can scan that QR code at, on the screen if you want to see that on your phone. I forgot to mention that I put QR codes in here. All right. Now, if you um, are interested in applying for a Garden Connect grant or a hydroponics grant, um, we have uh, some specials running on our website, which I'll show you. It's just on greenourplanet.org. And it is uh, right on the front page of our website. You can apply for a hydroponics grant. And if you do that, um, you will actually receive hydroponics units at your school. So if you watched Chris Anderson's presentation, you know all about that. You can also apply for a Garden Connect grant. And um, so our Garden Connect program, it costs $3,500, but with this grant, $2,500 is covered. So the school would pay $1,000 to be a part of the Garden Connect network, um, get access to all of our resources, which there are lots more that I didn't even mention, um, access to our curriculum and access to um, support with coordinators, access to our seminars, one-on-one -on -one support for help for your school um, virtually. Garden Connect is a total virtual program to be a part of. So on our website front page, you can apply right there. We're still accepting schools to apply. So if you do, um, just know I am actually the one who goes in and looks at the applications and accepts people. So if you reach out to me, which I'll give you my email at the very end, if you reach out to me and let me know that you're thinking about applying, I will be looking out for your application. And uh, just so you know, this doesn't um, necessarily uh, we don't we don't build gardens anymore. We used to, so this won't we won't be building a garden at your school. But our resources can help you with um, learning how to do that if you want to. Um, we can also just help you get started in a small way with container gardens and things like that, which I actually recommend starting small. Okay. And you can also scan that QR code right there to get to our website. Are there any questions that anybody has before um, I go into now just generally teaching in the garden and outside? Any questions about programming? We're about to get into the way more fun part of the presentation where we talk about teaching outside and the importance of it. All right, and I'll keep an eye on the chat too. All right, so whether you have a garden or not, it's it's a really good idea. And I know all you know this, but it's just, it's good. It's a good reminder to say that it's really good to get the kids outside and get them in nature, whether it's just in a grassy field or in a school garden or by some trees, anything that you have is totally awesome. Out, being outside, looking at the sky, you know, just, just being, there. Getting them out of the classroom is so good for them. But some of the easy ways to teach in your garden, if you have a garden and you are um, new to teaching in a garden, some cool things you can do is hunt for plant parts. You can also do that without a garden. Um, count plants, color scavenger hunt using paint chips is a really good one for those for the for the little ones. Uh, reading uh, reading books in the garden or just in an outdoor space like your courtyard. Um, 
talking about life cycle, checking plants in various phases, five senses observation, leaf matching, that one you can also do if you have trees around your school, exploring with a hand lens, lots of things you can do. Even if it feels, um, if you don't have a, um, if you don't have a garden at your school and it feels ridiculous getting out there and just looking at the trees around your um, around your school don't don't feel ridiculous because that's awesome you're getting out there you're showing the students what's around and there's definitely still stuff to learn about um, even if you don't have a garden or even if your garden is a little tiny container with just a few plants growing in it that's still awesome don't ever sell yourself short all right, so <laughs> I like it. I like this slide. Oops, sorry. Hang on. I like this slide. I like the next one too, but I like this one um, because when I was a first year teacher uh, a few uh, many years ago, I actually was um, I was a teacher at Kalen Elementary School in North Las Vegas, and um, as as you all know, I know everybody who's a teacher has been a first year teacher at one point in their life. It is so hard and to imagine getting your students out into just the outside just getting them outside is, is hard and I know that and if we have any first year teachers on here I feel for you if we have any teachers who are not first year teachers and still feel that way I feel for you still because I still feel that way too and it can feel really overwhelming especially when there are lots of plants around. There are lots of things that, you know, like bricks around that students that, that, you know, you worry about. And, you know, once you get outside, it's not it's not something that's normal routine for them. So it's it's kind of, you know, you're worried they're going to disperse like cats, which they might do. And that's happened to me before. So don't worry. <laughs> but um, so I like this slide because um, talking about garden classroom management or just outside classroom management is important because um, even if you have been teaching for years, it's still a different ball game when you're outside. So here's what I recommend. And then I um, welcome you to put in the chat anything else that you find helpful when you bring your students outside, or if you happen to have a school garden, what you do in your school garden when you bring your students out there. So anything outside, anything, just classroom management tips. So here are mine. Um, create a ritual when coming into the garden. And so maybe, you know, start out by walking in a whole big circle around the garden and, and you know, talking about, I mean, I'm, I'm talking maybe with, you know, um, K through two, maybe singing a song or something like that. Um, having a pre-exploration in the garden at the beginning of each lesson is also a really good one. Um, <laughs> I, I, I used to do this a lot with pretty much anything that was um, bound to be chaos if, if I wasn't very careful. So uh, anything like uh, building blocks, stem supplies, stuff like that. Having a free exploration period is really good because they can get their wiggles out and then come listen to the lesson or whatever you need them to do. Um, creating a garden call to bring students together is really good. Sometimes it's fun to just switch it up. A lot of you have these in your classroom, but you know, like peas and carrots or something like that is is good. Um, just to you know get them excited about that. Or if you don't have a garden yet, that's that's totally fine. You can make it make something up, and it's it's fun to just switch it up that way. Or also sometimes it's good to just use your regular call and response. Totally understand that too. Um, observe quietly and write observations in science notebooks. This is a really, really good one to just get them thinking scientifically outside or in a garden. Um, just, just writing their observations. What do they see? What do they smell? It's, you know, it gets them thinking like a scientist. Reward good behavior by harvesting leaves, fruit, seeds. Um, you can do this in a garden especially, but um, you know, you might see some things that can be picked and looked at, and, and um, that always piques students' interest. Um, having garden tastings, obviously you don't want to be tasting random trees around your school, so don't do that if you don't have a garden, but having little tastings is fun. Um, don't be afraid to do that, uh, and obviously you'll need to um, know all of your allergies and whatnot, but you all know that beforehand. And plant seeds whenever possible. I love this one because it reminds me to tell you never to be afraid to mess up a school garden or 
maybe you have a, you're starting a small planter box or maybe you just have soil and a bucket and you put seeds in it. You are doing an amazing job if you are doing any of the above. And it does not matter if you are not doing it correctly or not planting it in the right time of the year or, you know, if, if something goes crazy and you end up having to pull weeds and, and whatnot, but anything that you do in the garden is experiential or anything that you do outside and you're meant to make mistakes in gardening, whether you're a professional or you're a teacher trying to get their students out there, you do not need to be afraid of it. And um, I always like to tell teachers that are starting with our program that Green Our Planet, would Green Our Planet likes to tell everyone that this is a learning garden. Your garden is a learning garden. It's not a show garden. It's meant to try all the wacky things that your students want to try in the garden without anybody being worried about it. So please, by all means, if you get a garden, you have a garden, you're thinking about getting a garden, just remember that and tell your fellow teachers that and make sure everyone is kind of in agreement of that because it can get really hard when um, when teachers feel like they need to be experts at gardening in order to have a garden at their school. Um, I see that happen a lot and not to say that, that's in, that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just that you don't need to be an expert and you, you really um, can just jump right in, right along with your students and your students will love it regardless. Your students will love it if it's full of weeds. Your, your students will love it no matter what. So those are just my few tips there. And okay, so now let's talk about a couple of plants that are really good for, um, for student learning and why I recommend them. The first one on here is sunflowers. Of course, we all love sunflowers. You can collect the seeds really easily um, from the seed pods. You can grow, you can um, measure their growth really easily. They grow really big and tall, which is neat for the students to see their stalks after after they're you know done growing, their stalks dry up and make a really nice steak to use in your garden. They're just all around something really awesome to plant in your school garden. So sunflowers should be at the top of the list. Also radishes. This is actually the one that I recommend if you are new to gardening or you are just trying to plant in a little cup with your students, something, you know, just, it, just something to, that you want to see your student. If you want to see your students um, watch something grow, this is a great one because radishes, once you plant them from seed, they're typically ready in 30 days. And I'm not saying it'll be a perfect, rad a perfect beautiful radish by any means, but it's just a really good one because you can basically plant them everywhere. And in Las Vegas, there are certain times of years, year that you should plant radishes, but it's honestly like you can plant them whenever and just if they come up, that's great. You know, and you can plant them whenever and wherever. So if you, are nervous about planting in a garden or you you want to just try a little um grow bag outside of your classroom put radishes in there they're super fun to harvest anyway so i i highly recommend them um the next one is nasturtium i love these for a few reasons um from a, a horticulture standpoint they are really good um they're really good flowers to plant next to things um, that uh, that are like um, for companion planting. It's really good to plant them next to other plants. And we won't get super into that. If you know what companion planting is, you'll know what I'm talking about. Marigolds are also really good to plant um, for companion planting like next to tomatoes to help their health. But um, they're really good to have in your garden. They The flowers are beautiful. And also you can eat the flowers, which is really really cool for kids to see because they don't really think of eating a flower ever but yes you can eat nasturtiums they taste kind of like or like kind of like arugula almost like kind of spicy I don't know that, that's just my opinion of it if anybody's ever tasted one let me know and let me know what you think that they taste like but yes you can eat them you can put them in salads they're really fun. The kids think that's crazy that you can put them in 
uh, that you can eat them and put them in a salad. And so I, that's why I recommend them just because it blows their mind. Um, other top plants for kids, leafy greens is always great. Leafy greens, if you did the hydroponics, um, if you did the hydroponics presentation, leafy greens are good for hydroponics units, but they also grow really well um, in the winter in Las Vegas, which is really cool. Um, it's in there. And then um, in our virtual academy, we have a ton of videos that use leafy greens and salads that you can get for students actually excited about eating their greens. Um, broccoli and cauliflower, fun fact, did you know that they, that they are the flower of the plant? The flower is what you eat from the broccoli or cauliflower. So kids think that's really cool all the time, but it's technically you're eating the flower of it. And then um, I also wanted to mention, put, putting in a plug for broccoli and cauliflower, they are great for bees. If you um, let them go to seed or bolt, um, if you let them keep growing past their you know, harvesting phase is what I'm talking about. They, um, they are really, really good for the bees. The native bees in um, Las Vegas really love the little broccoli flowers that grow. Um, that grow when they bolt and you can actually eat those as well, which is really neat. And then obviously carrots are super fun to pull up um, from the ground. They, um, they take longer to grow than radishes do, but I, carrots are, I mean, when you see a carrot growing in the garden, it's just super tempting to pull them up. So if you plant carrots and you have a garden, <laughs> you're probably gonna get one of your students pulling a carrot up. Um, but before it's ready, but that's okay because it's literally just that tempting and I've even done it myself, you know, you just you carry it in there, you just got to pull it up. So those are really fun to harvest. I would say um, that and uh, um, potatoes are really fun as well, but I didn't put that one in there. Um, those are just some really fun though plants that I recommend, um, especially radishes. If you are just starting out, that's a great one because they're so fast. They um, they'll, they'll sprout super quickly and the kids will be able to see, see that easily and quickly. All right, so if you're interested in this type of thing or you are new to our, um, if you're new to our uh, program, we also offer teacher trainings and these are open to anybody, not just anybody who's in our program, but anybody in CCSD, anybody around the world actually, <laughs> they're open to. Um, we offer a few different courses and um, we hopefully will be adding some different ones as well. Um, and I also see in the chat, Joyce says we put carrots and students love to harvest and take them home to eat. We have Frayed Side Gardens here at CES Fernley. Awesome, hey, that's great. That's the carrots are summer plant. I agree. And I'm just checking the chat to make sure I didn't miss anything else. Thanks so much for putting that in there, Joyce. So if you're interested in this um, type of thing and you want to get to know a little bit deeper about our curriculum, especially, or just our programming in general, or if this just interests you and, and um, you need PDEs or CUs, which I'm not sure if they're actually called that anymore. It might be something different now, but we do offer our um, teacher trainings and you can sign up for those at greenourplanet.eventbrite.com. And um, that link will bring you to um, our Eventbrite page where we have our um, available trainings and you can sign up there. Um, Sim 101 and Hydroponics 101 are both $40 and financial literacy training. That one will, uh, that one is actually by donation. So you get to choose how much you um, want to donate for that one. And that one, I didn't really get um, a lot into this, but if you remember back to the hydro, or sorry, if you remember back to the farmer's market video, um, those students are practicing their financial literacy skills when they sell their produce to, um, to people um, out at the farmer's market. Now you can also do farmer's markets at your own school. It doesn't have to be the big giant farmer's market. So we do a financial literacy training that digs into some financial literacy lessons that we have prepared to get students to sell their produce and use their garden as a real world learning experience 
um, for financial literacy and economics, which is really cool. And our STEM curriculum, the fifth grade part is like all about um, running your garden as a business. So financial literacy training, I highly recommend as well. I'm gonna take you to this link. I'm just checking on the time. Okay, we've got time. I'm gonna take you to this link and show you the available courses that we have. Like I said, you don't have to be part of our program. You can take these no matter what. Um, and the one that would be coming up uh, really soon, let's see. We we're, we're actually right in the middle of our STEM 101 training. I will go into this um, STEM 101 online teacher training for the spring semester to show you. So this is the um, STEM 101 training. So this would bring you through the curriculum for our outdoor garden, so our outdoor garden STEM curriculum. So like what we talked about today. The curriculum that I talked with you about today would go over this kind of stuff. And um, they are, so STEM 101 and Hydroponics 101 are three days, uh, three different days. And um, they're from four o'clock PM to 6.30 PM Pacific time. So this particular one is on, I'm showing you right here, um, March 28th, April 4th and April 11th. And then there is also an asynchronous portion on Canvas. Um, and it's it's really, honestly, we get really good ratings on our teacher training. They're really fun. They're great ways to get your credits too. But um, so I highly recommend coming to them. I taught all of our fall classes for teacher training. And we do have um, a new, actually a, a teacher. Uh, I don't think she teaches in CCSD anymore, but she's coming on to facilitate for the spring semester. So it's a lot of, you know, teacher to teacher interaction and um, you get a lot of chances to ask about the curriculum. You, di you dive deep into the curriculum of your particular grade level. And, and honestly, they're really good trainings. Um, $40 to take the training and then the PDE office um, charges $15 to get that PDE credit. So um, if you have questions about te our teacher training classes, you can always ask me. Um, I'll show you my email address there at the end. And um, yeah, I highly recommend these. I will, also, I will also show you the Farmpreneur Program Finance um, and Entrepreneurship. That one is the financial literacy one. I know that's a lot of words. <laughs> entrepreneurship and farming, but we call our students who are selling their produce farmpreneurs. It's kind of just a silly term that we use that the students really like, farmpreneurs. This is the one that's donation-based. This is on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific, Saturday, March 4th, and uh, this is also a really, really great one, and um, it is a lot of it kind of revolves around farmers markets and getting your students to use their garden as a business and become farmpreneurs. So this one, like I said, is by donation. So you just click tickets right there to get that. Uh, and then hydroponics 101. I don't think that Chris Anderson was touching on this in her in her class, but if you if she did, I apologize if I'm repeating her and you took her class. Hydroponics 101 is set up very similarly to STEM 101. Um, it has three Wednesday sessions for two and a half hours each and an asynchronous portion on Canvas, uh, where the PDE offers um, the um, the PD or the PD credits for $15. So I highly recommend those. But I'm going to check the chat really quickly. Kim says our FFA class just got an awesome new greenhouse and they grow a lot of cool stuff. That is so cool. And you're in Eureka. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. That is so cool. I am super into that because um, last year um, at our old house, we actually just moved, but we built a hoop house and uh, we eventually going to have a really cool greenhouse at our own house. But at a school, that's even cooler. That's amazing. And props to you for that, because that is not an easy task <laughs> to get a uh, greenhouse at your school. But um, and that will just I mean, you can do so much with that. That's amazing. All right, so like I said, greenourplanet.eventbrite.com 
Uh, I will put that right in the chat for you so you can click that link. I'm going to type it out though green our planet event right. No, I can't spell it wrong. Dot com. Yeah. There you go. So you can uh, go to that link and you might have to copy and paste it. I see that it didn't hyperlink there, but that is how you get to our teacher training classes. Also, you can scan the QR code. I, I love QR codes, so I always include them so you can look on your phone. So um, we've got it. Um, we've got a few minutes left where we can spend exploring the virtual academy. Actually, we have we have until um, we have until I'm going to ask Leslie when our um, ending time was supposed to be three. We started at uh, 1245 so 140 is our end time which is 440 for me so we've got a few minutes but there is my email address I'm going to type it in the chat for you please save that because if you have any questions at all about green our planet um, you can email me I um, will I, I mainly do our teacher training department and our garden connect national program and uh, I can also point you in the right direction if you're looking for something else within green our planet I know the company really well so I can help you with whatever you need and I see Marie is from priest elementary school so that you have our original garden program and so you have the farmer that's awesome yes thank you Kim yes I I love sharing this and like I said any other questions you have let me know um and I just want to double check that I was correct that we have until one sorry I'm converting time zones here I'm in eastern 140 you're good, Christy, till 1.40. Awesome, good. I was hoping we would have time to look more at the virtual academy videos. So let's go back here. And by the way, come off of mute if you have any questions. I guess I should pause right now. Come off of mute, ask any questions that you have. Um, let me know what kind of things you might be looking for. And please do that while I pull up the virtual academy and find a good video. You know, I actually can play this um, for you. This is kind of a the Welcome to the Green Our Planet Virtual Academy video. I can give you a really good background on the Virtual Academy. Do you know where the Mojave Desert is? And by the way, do you know what a desert is? What conditions make a desert a desert? So here we're in Eastern Africa in a country called Kenya. And check out all the animals out here. It's 450 degrees below zero. That's really, really cold. Thank goodness I have the spacesuit to protect me. In addition to beta carotene, pumpkins contain vitamin C, vitamin E, iron, and folate, which all help strengthen your immune system. It's our immune system that prevents our bodies from being invaded by the billions of germs and viruses that we encounter every day. Hydroponic systems use less water, right? Instead of spraying water on plants outside where a lot of the water evaporates or escapes into the soil, hydroponic systems reuse water over and over again. There are two basic ways we can harvest our lettuce plants, the whole plant method and the cut and come again method. In this video, you're going to learn how to do both. Are you ready to go? See, glide on. Three, Three two, two, one, one. Blast, blast off! off. en uno de los huertos escolares y hoy les voy a enseñar cómo se mira una planta de alcachofa y cómo la cosechamos. La parte de la planta que cosechamos es la flor. As you can tell, I've been a very busy bee. I love experiments. Have you ever heard the story Jack and the Giant Beanstalk?
Okay, there we go. All right, we're back to, um, we're back because we had just have a couple minutes left. So I wanted to make sure I gave space and time for questions. And um, I also wanted to tell you that you can use the Virtual Academy. Um, right now it's free for everyone to use. Uh, please use it. Uh, a lot of teachers like to use it for sub plans too. Maybe not having your sub, you know, do a cooking demonstration or anything in class, but you can use the videos for sub plans. They're really great for that. Um, and it gets your kids excited. Uh, I did just want to look at the chat really quick. Joyce says, you've given me lots of ideas. The year of COVID, we were harvesting half a bushel of tomatoes a week and lots of okra and cucumbers. Oh, that's amazing. That's that's great. And I'm I'm wondering which school you're from. So put me and put that in the chat for me, what the name of your school is, just because I'm curious. And that's awesome. 